What's up everyone, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. Got the MFJ 1886 receiving loop antenna. Wideband receive only loop antenna. 0.5, uh, 500 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. And some might say, well, what do I want a receiving loop for? Well, a couple different things. Um, this is a high gain receive loop antenna that can be used for shortwave listeners. It can be used for people with high-end SDRs, such as the Apache Labs uh, software-defined radio that has, uh, you can set it for different antennas for transmit and receive. So you would use something like this to really pull out weak stations that you might not be able to pull out on your vertical. Uh, no transmit, of course, but if you're looking to pull in that weak station and make that contact, this might be for you. You can also use this to locate problematic noises around the home. Um, for instance, up there I have a transformer over there I know is causing me issues because on my vertical there, my high gain, uh, some bands are noisy. Now with something like this, I can null that out using this as a receive antenna if it's uh, you know 160 through 10 meters and I can have uh, even do it with a manual switch, uh, transmit on a vertical or a wire receive on the loop. Um, the way a loop works is basically if you're looking at the antenna, picture you're rolling a bicycle rim. If I can get this without it blinding me in the sun, I'll turn this. Okay, so this right here would be the direction of the transmit and receive. All right, picture you're rolling a bicycle rim down the road that's the direction you want to face the loop for receive. Now there's a null through the loop. So if I was facing this north and south, the way I just had it, north and south, the null would be east and west. If my power line was to the east or west, it would null out some of that noise. Um, so great for, you know, being directional. Now, what I want to do is explain this real quick and put it on a test. I'm probably going to hook up. I got the cobweb down right now because I'm using the mast for something else. Um, so basically, let me explain this. This is not just a circular antenna. Okay, the MFJ1886 has an active receiving preamp inside this weatherproof enclosure fed by a two uh, uh, coax with a uh, PL259 on it. The bias T is a unit that comes with this and basically powers this over the coax. So you'd put the bias T in your shack or at the radio location behind the radio somewhere and basically plug it in with a power supply. I'll show you that in a minute. And that'll power this loop without putting the power into your radio. All right, so it's powered over the coax and you never want to transmit into a loop like this that's a receive only loop. You will destroy it. In fact, I'm gonna show you here in a second a loop antenna that I have, another one of these that I accidentally did that with, so, um, and how I repurposed it. But anyways, we're going to hook this up and see what kind of receive I get. I might hook the MFJ cobweb up, and like I said, I'll switch back and forth, and we'll see what kind of receive gain this does. It, it kind of makes it like a sharp receive, um, you know, basically, and have instead of having this vertical or this wire just picking up everything in the air, you're kind of focused uh, on your receive, high gain and nulling out everything off the sides of it. So let's uh, check out what comes with it, the bias T. As you see, this is a weatherproof enclosure and the U-bolts come with it, really nothing to it. Okay, I have it on my little tripod here. And uh, so you bolt it up, you can use it outdoors, you can use it indoors. If you're a shortwave listener and you don't transmit, you can use this indoors. Um, so let's, uh, let's check it out. So here's the bias T I was telling you about. And basically all this does, bias T, is you power it with this wall ward adapter, all right, DC, 12 volt, 500 milliamp. And basically uh, you, you uh, plug the power into this and now it's basically got two, you put this in line, all right? DC pass would be going to your antenna, DC block would be going to your radio. This way you're not putting power on the coax into your radio, you'll destroy it. Make sure you hook this up correctly so that you don't damage your radio. Now this says uh, one through 50 volts DC, one amp max, 
the output of this wall wart is 12 volt 500 milliamp. If you're asking, well, this is not gonna work on portable or QRP day uh, or field day. Actually, you can. All you really need to do is get yourself the standard DC barrel connector here and um, hook it to a battery, small battery, tiny battery, 12 volt, three amp battery, whatever it is, and you can power this thing all day long. It really doesn't use that much power. Um, so putting it, what I'll do is put this in line here and I'll have the 817 out here, uh, QRP rig, and I'll set up the MFJ cobweb and we'll go back and forth and see what happens. All right, so I got the 817 here. I got the bias T hooked up with my coax switch. Uh, basically, uh, comment so this RG8X would be going to the cobweb and this one's going to the cobweb, this one's going to the uh, loop. So I'll tune around, find a uh, station or two, and I'll just go back and forth A and B. Okay, this is on the cobweb going to the loop right now. That's the loop going back to the cobweb. Back to the loop. Back to the cobweb. Back to the loop. Here's the loop. Yesterday around this time, 17. The cobweb. Back to the loop. And from the U.S. stations that um, it's uh, it's amazing. Back to the cobweb. Now you can on. hear the the noise in between. Watch the watch the S meter. There's the S. Look at this. So. Besides the static crashes, watch me go back to the the uh, cobweb. Now that's not saying that the cobweb is receiving a lot of noise. It's I have a lot of noise in my area. So looking at an S8 from those power lines going to a, I mean there's static crashes you can see, but look at this. That's the loop. Cobweb. All right. So just sitting here on a frequency where there's no traffic, look, all my noise on my S meter is gone until I go to the cobweb. Look at the noise coming on that. S8, S9. Again, not from the antenna, from the noise in my area that I could stifle with a loop antenna just like that. So here was the previous MFJ 1886 I had. Uh, this was right as they came out. I was sent one by Richard, and this was almost, I guess, the original revision, which they have since modified with the, the new one here. Um, so here is the board that I actually damaged. I, I had it hooked up to a QRP uh, transmitter or QRP rig and I accidentally hit the tune button. It only took about a quarter of a second of putting that low power into it and it cooked it. So make sure you do not transmit into this. You will damage the unit. So what did I do with it? Uh, basically <laughs> just gutted it, put a couple pieces of wire in here and repurposed it for my MFJ 935B loop tuner. So that way I don't have to worry about taking a piece of wire with the PVC frame to set it up. If you remember that uh, MFJ 935, I can kind of take this thing and just, I gotta fix a way that I can attach this to the top of the loop tuner. And then uh, I can pretty much, you know, just bring this with me and set it up real quick and tune, uh, I think seven, 15, 17, and 20 on this size loop. So um, you, you might, uh, you won't be able to buy it's not practical and you won't be able to buy this loop from them in this in this condition what I basically did is just showing you that you know you can repurpose it in the hobby uh, don't throw it away
do something with it make it an antenna but that's unserviceable so uh, and the best way of setting this up that I can do there was my cobweb there was my loop so I went out there and turned the loop a couple times but basically both of them on a tripod my my results are that it would probably be most a comp uh, most uh, beneficial to the shortwave listeners um, because you'll be really able to you'll really be able to pull out a lot of um, a lot of stations. I'm not a shortwave listener, so I'm not sure all the little bells and whistles in that part of the hobby. But um, I'm sure there's a lot of stations that are hard to copy that you want to get. And having a loop even in your room set up where you can turn and, and narrow, you know, narrow it down and get a copy on that station would be great. Um, the only other thing that I said before that I would also recommend it for would be if you got that antenna and you just can't make that contact out because of noise, you know, you want to pick up everybody that's way down in the noise or you have a high noise factor at your house, high noise floor. I would say pick one of these up if you have a radio that automatically tran you know, does uh, separation between A and B for transmit and receive. Um, that would make it a whole lot easier if to deal with noise from power lines. Um, so overall, it is doing what it's supposed to do. It is a, a, a well, well-designed receive antenna. Can you use it? I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you think of the video. And uh, in the future, if I ever have a chance to use this, I definitely will. I use this for the uh, 817 here on some QRP adventures. And uh, let's see what happens. So with the bias T, let me unplug this mic. Okay. Alright, can you turn the bias T off? You get nothing. You have to have that bias T on there. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. MFJ1886. In the next video I make, I'll do something with that one over there. So I can use that on my MFJ 935B loop tuner. 73 from KJ4YZI.